Next thing that we're going to talk about is writing the equation. Now, I showed you guys how to determine the slope. The next thing we're going to do is how to write the equation in slope-intercept form. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, two class periods ago, we learned how to graph. We talked about graphing functions, you know, as I mentioned, linear, quadratic, and so forth. And basically what we did, which you guys did not like, was that tedious form of saying, oh, let's go ahead and whatever the function is, let's choose a table of values between like negative 2 and 2, or between negative 3 and 3. And if I give you an equation, let's say you know y equals 4x minus 1, to go ahead and graph that, we just plugged in each of these points into the function and found the y value, or the equation and found the y value, right? And it was a very tedious kind of process, because you're just plotting points and so forth. And there's nothing wrong with using a table. Anytime you guys are, when you, especially when you guys are taking your test or on the um, uh, test or you know, exam or anything else, whenever you need to graph something and you're having trouble, always understand that you can use a table of values to determine and plot points all right, and kind of see the shape or see what's going on with the graph. However, um, we are going to also learn later in this class, not today, but how to graph in slope-intercept form. And what's very important about slope-intercept form is that it's a very basic way, a much quicker way to be able to graph a line, for instance. So the letter um, B, whatever that value is, is going to represent our y-intercept. That is going to be where the graph is going to cross the y-axis. All right, And that has a coordinate point of 0, comma b, meaning the x value is 0, meaning that point is going to lie on the y-axis, hence why we call it the y-intercept, where the graph intercepts uh, the y-axis. The next thing is going to be the slope, which we just talked about. right? The slope is a ratio. It's not a point. So our slope, remember, is the change in the y-coordinates between the change in the x-coordinates between any two points. A lot of you have also you know, learned it or remembered it as rise over run. Change in the y, change in the height over the change in the x, which is the change in the you know, horizontal distance, or what, as we sometimes can call it, the run, between any two points. All right, and we'll learn how to graph this later. I'm not really so concerned about the graphing part of it. But we have a problem. And the problem is, if we're given the slope and we want to write, and we're given a point that the line goes through, write the equation of the line. All right? Now, the problem you know, with this, if we want to write the equation of the line, we want to be able to write this in slope intercept form. And if I'm just going to kind of use a table of values, it's kind of difficult because we don't know what the y-intercept is, right? So we can't use like a table of values um, to figure out what the equation is because we don't know what the y-intercept is. However, let's go ahead and see. Let's write down the things that we do know. So if we want to write the equation in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, we know what the slope is, correct? Yes? So we can plug that in. So y equals 3x plus b. To write the equation in slope-intercept form, all we need to do is determine what the value is b is. But they don't tell us the y-intercept. They just say it goes through a random point. Remember, guys, when we were graphing these, when we did that table of values, remember we found like many, many points? right? So all those points lie on the line. There's an infinite set of points that make up a line. They only give us one point. Now. Jacob, what could those points represent as far as in the equation? What do you think? This is really important. Tristan, could you put that away, please? Like away. Thank you. And x. This is a point that lies on the line. The graph goes through this point. Remember, a line is made up of infinite many x and y points infinite x and y points. That's why the equation has the x and the y. The x and the y represent any point that the graph goes through. So I can go ahead and plug this in for x and this point in for y. And by doing that, I now produce an equation that only has one variable left, which is b, which I need to determine the value for. So I have 7 equals negative 6 plus b. Add 6, add 6. 13 equals b. So now I know my y-intercept. I know what my slope is. 
And can I write my equation in slope-intercept form? Yes, of course I can. y equals 3x plus 13. And again, ladies and gentlemen, we will go over how to graph um, slope-intercept form later. But for right now, all I want you guys to do is be focused on how to write the equation.